Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. When I was 17, I used to work at Subway, so I actually have two of these stories, but this is the first one. I was on the closing crew, so it was my job to make sure that the lobby got cleaned and that, you know, the trashes were taken out and all that stuff. It was policy that we were supposed to make sure that the doors were locked, but I was about to take the trashes out as soon as I was done mopping, so I did not have the door locked. I was working with a coworker, but he was in the back, so it looked like I was out there alone. Well, my mop bucket got dirty, so I went into the back to go change out my water, and I heard the ding of the bell. I go out there like, hey, I'm so sorry, we're closed, and there's nobody out there. But I can hear somebody out there. I hear shuffling. So I go into the back, and I go get my coworker, who's a guy. I say, hey, I think you need to come up here and come help me out with this. As we turn around the corner, there is a guy peeping over the register, trying to look into the back of the store where I just went. Luckily, my coworker confronts him, like, hey, can I help you with anything? He laughs. He says no. Walks out. So we called the police because that was kind of fucking strange, right? This guy had army crawled across the floor and the police said that they recognized his tattoo. He was one of a rape. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. Okay, I promised you my second story, so here it is. As I said in my last video, I worked the night shift at Subway, which meant that I was the one that had to close up at the end of the night. Well, this time I noticed that I was followed as I got out of the parking lot. I lived in a pretty rural part of town, which was about a 10 minute drive from Subway. As we started getting further out of town, I noticed that the same guy was following me, but now he had turned his lights off. Not only did he turn his lights off, but he put his hat down over his face, so I couldn't see who it was. Now I was 17, so I didn't really keep a full tank of gas on me, so I ended up having zero miles on my gas tank left. My neighborhood was one giant circle. My house had a gate that you actually had to get out of your car to open in order to get into the driveway. And of course the gate was closed. So there's me, zero miles left on my gas tank, and I'm driving around the circle, and this guy follows me about three or four times around the circle. Finally, I start honking as I'm passing my house, and luckily my mom was awake at like midnight. He runs, opens up the gate, my whole ass in there. I didn't sleep. Tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. Strap in for this one. So this is about my mom, not me. I'm gonna preface this by saying we're very similar, we both like to talk a lot. So it's the early 90s, and my mom and her friend have just ditched school because it's hot and they want to go swimming. So they're hitchhiking down the road and it's all just Australian bushland around. Finally, a car pulls over. They both get in, my mom gets in the front seat, her friend gets in the back seat. And immediately they both get that just gut feeling. Something was wrong. They had just gotten into the car of then unknown Australian serial killer, Ivan Milat. He had been killing people for years at this point and no one had found out it was him yet. But they both just got the feeling that something was really wrong. So my mum starts talking. Oh my gosh, Naomi, we're gonna get in so much trouble when we get home. I think I just saw our neighbor drive past. Oh, we're gonna get in so much trouble. Dad said we can't hitchhike anymore. You know my dad, right? He's the senior sergeant in town. I like your car. My dad and I saw this one the other day, actually, in town. He said it would make a great first car for me. Tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. Part two. Now, this was in the town called Bargo. I'm not expecting you to know this town, but it's rural, Australian, hot. There's plenty of bushland and not many houses. And my mom and her friend are 17 and in the car of serial killer Ivan Millette. As I said, my mom's just talking. She even starts talking about how she knows his family. Oh, I think your brother is my brother's footy coach. Yeah, your niece is in the year below me at school. Saying everything she can to establish a connection between the two of them. Even though she had no idea who he was, she trusted her gut and was just trying to let him know that if he did something, he would be caught. Now he ended up pulling over and just saying, you girls should get out now. And my mum's friend was like shaking in the back seat. She had just frozen up. And it was only a few years later that straight out of high school, my mum joined the police force. She wasn't there for very long, but in the time that she was, the bodies were found of Ivan Millet's victims and he was arrested. And she recognized him from when she hitchhiked with Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. Okay, so I was moving to England and my sister was with me. We were staying in an Airbnb for two three nights the first it's an airbnb where it's one room is yours one room is someone else's and mind you the rooms don't have locks which is just not cool in the first place but whatever we didn't know we're there the first day there's a lady with us and then she's supposed to check out and no one else is supposed to come well the next day we go downstairs or we go come back from shopping and the airbnb host is there with this older man he's like maybe in his mid 40s just kind of like weird vibe you know and i was like oh shit well the host is like this is your new roommate he's going to be staying with you and we're like well it's not scheduled he's like yeah but it's okay and we're like mm, not really so my sister and i go to dinner we're like trying to find other airbnbs or hotels or anything around and we just couldn't figure out what to do i mean we're in a new country hello so we go back and the man is in the airbnb but he's with another man too oh part two okay so there's two older men in the apartment just staring at us and we're like this is not okay we didn't know what to do we should have left we were so stupid we don't know why, i don't know why we didn't 
Well, we go into the kitchen and grab some weapons because hello. We grab knife and scissors and a cork bottle opener and we go to our bedroom. Again, there's no locks on the door, stupid. So my sister and I are like, hey, we gotta move the bed in front of the door. We move the bed in front of the door and then we're fine. We don't hear anything. It's like 10 o'clock at that time. So we're up because we have jet lag and it's two in the morning and we're just talking. And the next thing we hear is the bedroom door of the other men's room open. I'm like, okay. Well, the next thing we do in here is the man opening our door, but the bed's in the way. So he's like pulling it and then pushing and like trying to open it. And we're just like, hello, what's going on? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was the bathroom. And my sister and I are like, oh my God. So we're like, we're going to die. <laughs> oh, part three. Sorry. Okay. So the man closes the door, says, sorry, like, so sorry. And then he goes into his room and he's talking to other guy. Then we hear them packing up and we're like, oh my God. So my sister and I still have the bed against the door and it's like locked so you can't like open it and we pack up our things really fast because we're like we got to get out of here we we got to move we don't know what to do do we call the cops we don't know the cops number which is we could have googled but we just were so like you know frustrated I mean like in our brains at that moment that we heard them go downstairs to fill up their car and then they were going to come back up like that's what we heard them say so we're like okay cool no we're gonna leave as soon as they do so they leave they're like sorry and then they close the door and we grab our things real fast move the bed we don't even like make up the room or everything or anything it's just it's a mess so we leave we go downstairs they're in the lobby we're like rolling our things and then they're coming back in and they're like what and we're just like nope we get in our uber because we already ordered it and we were out of there the scariest night of my life girls tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life so this was about 10 years ago. My boyfriend was out of town um, and I was really, really sick. So I went to Walgreens at like one or two in the morning um, and I was at a stoplight at an intersection and this car comes up behind me and like hits me, but like it just tapped me, you know? So I get out, there's no damage to either one of our cars. The guy's like, do you want to call the police? And I was like, no, I just want to go home and vomit. So I get back in my car, he gets in his car, I leave. He goes a different direction, right? Well, I'm driving for like maybe two minutes and a, some, a car comes up behind me and is flashing their lights. And I was like, oh, maybe it's the guy. Maybe he wants to call the police now. So I pull over into a parking lot. It's like a school parking lot. This car doesn't even fully stop. It pulls up behind me and kind of angles forward uh, to block me. And then this dude jumps out of the passenger seat and runs toward my car. And I'm like, oh, I'm not dying today. Not today. So I like reverse out of the parking lot. Uh, par I'm obviously alive, but part two. Right, so I back out of the parking lot, the guy jumps back in the car, and they start following me. It's like two dudes in the car. And I'm in the middle of nowhere in North Carolina, and it's a very rural area, and there's just a two-lane road. So they actually pull into the oncoming traffic side, and this guy is leaning out of the passenger window, like trying to reach for me, but we're going like 50 miles an hour, so I don't understand that at all. Um, I don't have cell phone signal because it's like 2010. So I just keep driving. I don't think to drive to a police station. I just keep driving for like an hour. After about 20 minutes, they eventually pull off and go a different way. Um, and I just keep driving. And when I finally get signal, I call my mom and I cry. Then I called the police and they were just like, oh, glad you're not dead. Um, so yeah. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. It necessarily wasn't my quick thinking, but it was the help of someone else. I think I was in like 8th or ninth grade. But you know, in New York City, there's delis on like almost every corner. Basically, I leave my apartment and I'm walking to my deli. And this guy gets out of his car and he's like, do you know where this address is? I'm like, it's two blocks away. He's like, why don't you get in the car and show us? And I was like, no, it's that way. He keeps proceeding saying, get in my car, tell me where it is, or give me your phone, tell me where it is. And I started to notice it was really sus and someone else was in his car. The thing about this makes me oof. He got really close to me, started putting his hands on me, low-key dragged me to his car, which I was only about seven to ten feet away from and this guy comes running over and he's like do you know this man and i was like no he was like oh like i know her like i'm taking her with me and the guy got really fucking mad and stomped back into his car and they drove away the guy was like i'll stay with you until they leave and i'll walk you around the block back to your apartment building i'm gonna do a part two because there's so much more to the story and i'm so fucking glad this man saved me Okay, so part two. Basically, this guy walks me around the block, whatever, but I'm still, like, sus to go back into my apartment because they saw me walk out of my building. I wait a little bit, and then I go back up because I don't see them. I told my mom, and she's like, you need to call the cops. So we called the cops. I gave them a description of both people and the car. Cops came to my crib, gave me their cards in case I see them again. I can just call them on the spot. 
but two days later my mom is going out and she sees them she remembered the description so she started taking pictures of them and their license plate and they fucking noticed so they drove away super fucking fast and so my mom has the business card from the cops she emailed and texted it to them right away they ran the license plate through the system the license plate was stolen my precinct actually had mugshots of the same exact people that tried to put me in their car one for assault two for attempt of kidnapping thank god that guy came around he literally saved my life i wish i had his phone number so i could have texted him thank you so much and to tell him what happened and what he saved me from thank god everything happens for a reason but now i'm terrified of men girls tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life so when i was 18 i had left my friend casey's house i was on the way to my parents house and i was on the stretch of highway all by myself and this car went to pass me but instead of passing me they just stayed right next to me right so i slowed down to let them pass but then they slowed down and so i sped up and then they sped up just staying right with me and all of a sudden they started honking and i thought immediately i thought must be someone i knew so i look over and it's this old man and he went like this and started wagging his tongue at me and he kept, he pointed at me and gave me a thumbs up and kept honking trying to get me to stop maybe and so I just, I hit the gas and then he hit the gas. And so I slowed down and he slowed down. I couldn't lose him at all. And so there was a road to the right of me and I was slammed on my brakes and I just wanted off the highway. So I was just gonna go. And he slammed on his brakes, started turning wide to follow me. And I cranked it back and I gunned it back onto the highway. And at this point traffic had caught up and he hesitated and turned right around back where he had came from. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. When I was in third grade, I had a really, really old babysitter. And one day he forgot to pick me up from the bus stop after school. At first, like I kind of waited, but I didn't act like I was scared until I saw that somebody was watching me and then was starting to walk towards me. Something in me just told me I shouldn't wait for my babysitter. So I just proceeded to walk the, the way that I would, you know, if I wasn't with my babysitter to get back to their apartment. Being that I am a terrified nine-year-old, I keep looking back, and as I'm looking back, I see that the dude is like still behind me, still very much following me. And I swear, y'all, I swear he was like walking faster. Anyway, I get to the top of the hill that leads to my um, babysitter's apartment, and I see this couple, and I don't know, just something Emmy just said, cry, girl, cry. I started crying. I ran to them, and I hugged them. I said, this man is following me. And I remember lo them looking at the man, the man looking at them, and just taking off. Please trust your intuition. Tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. I almost got abducted twice in Turkey. I'm going to talk about the second attempt. There were last minute changes before our flight, so we had to go across town. My sister and I had to catch a bus in the middle of the night. We had a huge black suitcase that was too heavy for us to carry and the wheels were actually broken. On the bus, I sat across from a man who was mirroring every movement I was making. When I went up to the bus driver, this man literally did this. My sister and I were freaking out and we knew something was gonna happen to us as soon as we got off the bus. We didn't speak the same language, no one spoke English on the bus. In a panic, my sister and I were saying, Hada mahki suri, shan Allah, hada saadna, hada arabi. Thank goodness there was a Syrian refugee on the bus and he told us like, what's up, how can I help? And we told him the whole story. He went up to the guy and he was like, why are you bothering them? These are my sisters. He got off the bus stop with us, carried a heavy suitcase on his back and walked with us for 15 minutes. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. Okay, so not me, because when I was single, I lacked any sense of self-preservation. But my friend Susie one time did something that I am eternally grateful for. One night, Susie and I went out to a bar to have some drinks, and before we started drinking, met a couple of gentlemen. Scratch that, they weren't gentlemen. One of them was Russian, had a very thick accent, and he told me his name several times, but I could not pronounce it or remember it, so I asked to call him Bob. That made him angry. Over the course of our conversation, Bob purchased two drinks from the bar for me. After those two drinks, I was completely out of it. Obviously, now I know what happened. I declared that I was going to go home because I did not feel well and I needed to lay down, and Bob offered to let me come to his house to lay down. I was too out of it to be anything but compliant, so when he grabbed my arm and drug me out of the bar, I went with. Susie ran after us, pushed him away, and told him he was not taking 